Hi guys, Dan Cooper here from Pro Tools Expert, and I've got myself a copy of Pro Q2 by FabFilter that I've been using quite a lot recently, and I want to show you a handful of features that I've really come to like. Firstly, let me just set this into its new full screen mode. So when I started using Pro Q2, I thought it was presented in a rather sparse way, but I quickly learned that all the controls are just a simple click or two away. So let me show you what I mean. So I can just click anywhere to select a band and drag it around, use my mouse to narrow these bands, narrow the queue. And if I want lots of bands, I can double click, make a new bands, drag around. To change these shapes, I can simply right click, go to shape, make this a low cut instead. Drag that about, change the slope again with my mouse wheel, or by right clicking, go to slope, go all the way up to 96 dB per octave if we choose. Loads of options, loads of ways to kind of interact with the EQ. So, you know what it's like when you start to boost and cut frequencies, the output level will change in the relation to what you're doing with the EQ, which can be a bit misleading to the ear. Now, FabFilter have included a really useful auto gain feature that automatically compensates for boosts and dips post EQ. Right, so let me just demo the auto gain feature here. So if I play the track, create a wide bands. If you look at the output on the right there, you can see I'm clipping it. If I do a big cut opposite, you can see the level drop. Now the auto gain feature at the bottom right here, if I select that, if I move it up, it should hopefully stop the big differences when boosting and cutting. So if I leave this up there and turn it off, you'll hear what I mean. Sweep it. And bypass it. And back in again. Now that is a very useful, very cool feature. Now hopefully you've noticed by now that the basic layout of Pro-Q2 is fairly similar to other EQ plugins. And what I like is that FabFilter have taken some aspects of what we're accustomed to, and it seems like they've taken them a little bit further, like this display range feature you've probably seen me play with already at the top right here. Now I found setting this to either 3 dB or 6 dB saves me from accidentally overdoing my boosts or cuts, sort of a gain safety net if you know what I mean. So if I set it to 3 dB, play the track again. Let's make a subtle lift somewhere. And sweep. Okay, then if I don't quite hear it, I can move it up to 6 dB in the range. A little bit more apparent there. If I want to be more brutal, I can push again the display. Got 12. Further still, up to 30. And you see, I like that because it means when I get to the 3dB line, it sort of warns me that Okay, do you want to overcook it any more? Well, yeah, push it and it goes up further. I like that. It's a really cool feature. So sticking with safety net sort of features, there's a really nice way to sort of gently adjust each band. So watch the cursor whilst I drag this band around. So my hand's not moving too much on the mouse, but what I'll do now is hold shift down on the keyboards, do the same movements on the mouse, and it kind of makes it quite lazy, if you will, which is great. And you can also, in conjunction with this little headphone symbol, if you hold shift and that down, you can, solo the bands and move it around gently or take your finger off the shift key and you get a bit more freedom.
Okay, so the last feature I want to show you, and it's one I'm really digging at the minute, is the mid-side feature that Pro-Q2 has. And I'm going to demo that with some drum overheads where the kick drum is slightly off to the left channel than dead centre. And I'm going to use this to try and correct that a little bit. So let's have a little listen to the drums. You might need some headphones to hear this properly. You can hear it over to the left channel. So the first thing I'm going to do is select mid-side at the bottom here create a new band. I'm going to start to work the sides first because that's where the problem is. So hit S at the bottom here. Right click to create that into a low cut. You can hear that's already helped a little bit. But just to prove that, I can use this little dial at the bottom there to monitor just the sides. Move that around. Yep, that sounds good. So let's have a listen to what's going on in the mid, because what I'm going to do is increase the level of the kick a little bit. Turn that to mid. And then mix between the two. Sounds about right. Let's just AB between them. Works a treat. So what are my final thoughts on Pro-Q2? Well, I've come to the conclusion that this is a bit of a Swiss Army knife. There's so many more features in Pro-Q2 that I just can't go through in this video, like the new EQ match feature. However, Marcus at Studio One Expert posted a video tutorial on setting this feature up that's well worth checking out, and I'll put a link in the description. I do feel it's a little bit of a shame that there isn't a real-time pitch tracking feature, especially as there is an included keyboard display at the bottom, but apart from that, I do feel that Pro-Q2 has everything I want from an EQ that sounds great and is easy to work with. Let us know your thoughts on Pro-Q2 in the comments below. I've been Dan, and as always, thanks for watching.